Colorado Springs. Nearly 500,000 people. Olympic City, USA. Garden of the Gods. Pikes Peak. It's a growing city. Our local government has a lot of employees. What exactly do they do? How does it impact my life? This is where you find out. Behind the Springs, an inside look at your local government. Hello everyone, I'm Jen Schrader and I work for the City of Colorado Springs Communications Office. It's my pleasure to be here today. I have two guests um, who are going to talk with us about a partnership that really benefits our entire community. Um, I wanna welcome everybody. Um, we're recording this interview both as an episode of our podcast called Behind the Springs and as part of the UCCS series called Five Things You Need to Know. No matter where you're listening or watching, we're glad you're joining us. And I wanna introduce my two guests. Um, Jeff Green is Chief of Staff for the City of Colorado Springs. Welcome, Jeff. Hello, Jen, good to see you. Thank you for being here. And Martin Wood is the Senior Vice Chancellor of University Advancement at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Martin, thank you for joining us too. Yeah, thanks, Jen, appreciate it. We really appreciate you both being here. And before we talk about the collaboration between UCCS and the City of Colorado Springs, I want to start by um, getting a little personal and asking you both to tell us a little bit about yourselves and your roles, both with the city and UCCS, um, and and you know how you came to be in the role that you are in now. Um, maybe I'll start with you, Martin. Sure, I've been at uh, UCCS for 27 years. Um, I think I've known Jeff pretty much all 27 of those. Uh, wow. <laughs> but but we both started when we were in our teens, so. <laughs> And, uh, so you're both very young, very young. Yeah, well, yeah we're both very young. And uh, Jeff was a county administrator for El Paso County and now at the city. Uh, my role is has been for the entire 27 years has been an advancement work, which is really external facing work to the great degree. So this is areas like communication, marketing, alumni relations, fundraising, yeah. university partnerships, community relations, government relations. Uh, pretty much everything that's connected across into our community and our region. The university is is very much a community-centered university. Uh, we were actually born out of the community, and so we really focus very much on our region and how we support our citizens and the community. Um, and my job really is to bridge the communication between the city and the university as well as help manage those partnerships that we have. Okay, sounds great. And Jeff, tell us a little bit about your journey into public service. <laughs> um, first of all, I'll say um, it's a real pleasure to be on the air today with Martin, uh, Dr. Wood, as I affectionately refer to him. And uh, Martin's a dear friend. Uh, we're both uh, great baseball advocates. And uh, Martin has is a real asset to the university and to our community. And uh, uh, his commitment to public service uh, has been illustrated many times over. And uh, I just can't say enough about Martin. Martin's one of those individuals that has uh, uh, dry wit, uh, a great sense of humor, and uh, he can always make us laugh. And so I think laughing and having fun is a large part of our job. And great segue into uh, as the chief of staff and the chief administrative officer for the city of Colorado Springs, you know, my, I have responsibilities to ensure that the mayor's intent is carried out uh, as, as regards to the operations of the city, uh, liaison to council, policy development. And so it's a wide range of responsibilities I have uh, facilitating our annual budgeting process. Uh, how do we look at uh, our public infrastructure needs? and to ensure that the mayor is appropriately advised and has the information he needs to make the appropriate decisions uh, for the city. And, you know, there is no question in regards to why my relationship is so important with the university and how the university and the city are very much integrated and uh, look forward to uh, going to further discussion. Okay, thanks, Jeff. My second question is is back to Martin. People can assume that there's that benefit to UCCS having a relationship with the city, but why is it so important? Can you kind of spell out to us, um, you know, why it, why should the average resident care about that partnership? Well, I think for a bunch of reasons. I mean, um, first of all, we have 32,000 alumni who live, work, and play in Colorado Springs. 
uh, we are a major employer. Um, we we have always viewed everything we do, whether it's creating degrees, partnerships, how does this impact the city? How does this affect our citizens? Um, and I'll just flat out say, I ditto what Jeff said about me back to him. Uh, <laughs> a long relationship. I mean, this kind of relationship would not happen if Jeff was not at the city. It's that simple. Um, because, you know, we, we talk a lot. We keep our eye on the ball. We look for win-win situations where the university can benefit, the, the region can benefit, the community can benefit, the city can benefit. Whether that's infrastructure, it doesn't matter what it is. But, but, but I was just thinking this morning, there's so many things that we do together, whether it's cybersecurity. Uh, we're about ready to start a smart cities initiative where the university is going to get involved. Uh, we're getting ready to look at re the redevelopment of the rest of North Nevada. Um, you know, there's just a lot that goes on, and these are all things that mutually benefit our community. And I think that that the university is a little unique compared to a lot of universities in the sense that that we do think about what we do as how does it benefit students, obviously, but but greater also how does it benefit our community because we see ourselves as a community player, and we want to do things that are that are successful for our region. You know, when we put the downtown uh, facility in um, on Tejon, that was that was a partnership with Norwood. Uh, the city was involved in that, and that was because we wanted to bring UCCS more into our downtown community for our faculty, for our students, for our staff, for access reasons. I know the city uses that facility quite a bit. I know utilities uses it quite a bit. It's become this community gathering kind of place, I think, which is exactly what we wanted it to be. And, and um, you know, I know we, for example, I know we host the, the, we have the medical clinic in the Lane Center, the city medical clinics in the Lane Center, which, again, great partnership. Again, when we have so many of our folks that benefit from all these relationships, whether, you know, it's faculty that benefit by doing research, by teaching, it's students who get to do the same kinds of things, they get internships. I mean, it's just... Um, um, we have to be careful we don't overdo ourselves because there's just so much to do. I've been on conversations all morning about Space Command and and what role does the university play in helping bring Space Command here? And it turns out there's a lot of things that we can do and we are doing them. And so it's just been a it's been a great journey. It will continue to be a great journey. Um, we're all we all we all want the same outcomes at the end, and and that's why it works so well. You and know? Jeff, what what can you add about the partnership? What what are some examples? I'm sure you agree with many that Martin gave, but what are some other examples from a city perspective that's been beneficial? You know, I'm going to go back and just uh, uh, say a few things, and and I'm going to look at it from both a, a regional perspective as well as specifically a city perspective. And um, I feel very strongly about collaboration, and the reason we have been so successful in the last almost six years. Um, with the relationship that Mayor Southers and his commitment, not only to the city and to the region, but also to the university system and uh, his strong support of UCCS. And when you think about this relationship, it comes about through collaboration and partnerships. And uh, when you look at a, the city, the c this city is experiencing a true renaissance. And when you talk about how people work together, I am just really excited. Uh, some of the things that Martin mentioned, the Smart Cities Initiative, and how the university and the city are going to be very much integrated on how we look at very strategic initiatives associated with smart cities. But I want and to take for, a step Let back. me interrupt you. For people who don't know, smart cities is just, you, you know, taking technology to that, that next level, right? And benefits everybody. It, it benefits everybody, but it's on all levels. How we look at um, our utility system, how we look at the integration of technology and the support of the university. Um, how do we look at the advancement of the city itself? Um, how do we look at traffic management planning? How do we look at uh, development? And, you know, um, taking a step back and talking about City for Champions. City for Champions came about because you had so many people that was committed to the initiative. However, 
City for Champions would not have happened with, uh, without the su strong support of the chancellor at that point in time, Pam Shockley, Martin Wood, and Stephanie Finley Fortune. Those three individuals really stepped up to provide assistance to the city, uh, provide assistance uh, to uh, Norwood Development and Chris Jenkins and Jeff Finn and how we pursued this initiative. And, you know, at one point in time, I remember sitting in at the uh, university in this large conference room and we were having this major debate of whether or not we should withdraw our application. And it was the, 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 the stability, the calmness, the leadership of the individuals I have referenced, us coming together and saying, no, we're going to pursue this. We're not giving up. We're going to make this happen. And when you look at the darkest days of that period of time, and you had strong advocates, but you had a lot of individuals who didn't understand what City for Champions was about, and you had a lot of naysayers, those individuals are now strong supporters Right. Trust that we have built in this process is the relationship between the university and the city and those individuals have garnered public trust. We have we have made commitments. We have bent those commitments. We've made promises. We have kept those promises. And so when we look at these future initiatives, we're really excited about what's going to happen with North Nevada. And, you know, many years ago, we had this area uh, that was surrounding the university, and it was industrial. Uh, it was a lot of areas that, you know, none of us would ever take our children, our families. And there was this development strategy, and it was the relationship between the university and the private sector and the city and our urban renewal authority and one of the tools that we used. And we went through this major redevelopment process and we created this environment that's increased the overall wealth for the community. It's created jobs that support our universities and our students. But it's also, it is the example of what a city and a university can do together. And when you look at the uh, benchmark cities and you compare the city of Colorado Springs to other communities, there is no question what has made those communities successful is they have a major university located within those cities, and it's the relationship of the city and the municipality with that university. It's so true. There's one located there, but more than that, there's that collaboration. That's that is, such a good point. Um, Martin, let me ask you uh, the next question, um, or perhaps both of you want to weigh in, but can you talk about, you alluded to this, the benefits to students versus the benefits to residents and how that overlaps? Yeah, the, the, the students benefit from all of this, um, sometimes very directly and sometimes indirectly. But let's just take the city, Jeff Mason City for Champions. Let's just take the Hibble Center for Sports Medicine and Performance as a perfect example of this. Uh, this. This structure has only been open since August, and yet the impact that it has made in the community already during a pandemic, I might add, is extraordinary. Um, you know, we have had Olympians, we've had you know, organizations from all over the country, all over the world come here. This is a facility that will stand alone as its type of facility in the country. And there's students, you walk through the building, there's students everywhere. The beauty of this building is it was a partnership between basically the city, Centura Health, and University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And yet, ultimately, in addition to all the patients that are going to come through there, all the athletes that will come through there, at some point down the road, there will be a thousand exercise science students in that building. If that building was not there, there would not be a thousand exercise science students. So students get this very direct benefit by virtue of having that building that was the result, as Jeff pointed out, of a great community effort where everybody came together, said failure is not an option, and we all just drove home to get to the end game. And so whether it's internships, whether it's students getting internships, getting scholarships from our community citizens, from our industry, from our corporations, and of course, jobs. It's that 30,000 alumni that are working in our community right now. But students are, nursing students are in the hospitals. We've got, we've got, and all these projects we've talked about with cybersecurity, North Nevada, smart cities, 
students will be involved in all of these projects. They'll be doing research alongside their professors. They'll be involved in internships in those programs. So students get this benefit that happens all across the board, uh, including things like the Institute Center for the Arts, which again is a become a huge community magnet for this community. And if you walk through that building, that building is full of students. And so by virtue of having these relationships and having these partnerships that then result in these kinds of outcomes, you know, the community gets tremendous benefit and the students get the benefit as well. Yeah. It's one of those win-wins that you referred to for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I think the other thing, um, or I want to mention to our listeners, I know UCCS listeners may be very familiar with the Hibble Center, but um, you know, if you're not familiar with those, that's just one example of the City for Champions project. So if you're not familiar with those um, and want to get more familiar, I encourage you to do some online research and check out our City for Champions webpage um, and just check out those projects because they're incredible. They're in various stages and it's just an exciting time, um, even in these difficult times, like you both alluded to. And that sort of brings me to my next question, Jeff, which is, can you address the importance of partnerships like this? You addressed it in general, but specifically in challenging times like we're in right now. Um, we find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic. We're working to recover. And I would assume that, that having these relationships in place is critical. There's, there's no question that's critical. And um, recently I had a conversation with uh, uh, Martin and with uh, Chancellor Reddy. And I applauded them on how they have managed uh, the campus environment, how they supported their students. Um, and, you know, when you look at the relationship and you're looking at individuals who have set the example on how do you address the psychological needs of the faculty and our students? Um, how do you uh, address the needs of the parents? And it's, it's all tied together. And um, how do you um, encourage a hybrid working environment? And uh, some of the students have really excelled in this environment and how Martin and I are interacting. I mean, Martin and I like to face each other. I mean, we have breakfast quite frequently and uh, we enjoy our eggs and bacon and and other things. But uh, but we've, we're, we're, I'm missing that. I miss my Martin time and uh, the chance to be able to interact. But when you're talking about dealing in this environment, one of the things, technology has played a major role. Um, it's really advanced, it's increased productivity. And uh, I also see opportunities here. And how we look at the opportunities, and, and Martin alluded to this earlier, is the redevelopment strategy of North Nevada. and. How do you, I mean, there's been major investment of private uh, of private developers. Uh, there's been a major investment by the university. Uh, there's also been other investors uh, who have looked at this as a financial instrument. And, you know, we've, we've had some great outcomes. But this, at this time, the university and the city are working together on how we look at a defined process in which we encourage the appropriate development and commercial and business activity that will occur within this corridor that will support the efforts of the university. It will complement and improve the areas along the city. But what we're talking about too is, um, as the mayor has stated, with, with the, since the mayor has come on board, his relationship with the council and with the university, that stability has incurred major investment. People are not willing to invest in a community unless they see the stability. They see the ability that a municipality is going to make major investments in itself. And so as we're investing and in looking at our infrastructure needs, as we're looking at our utility infrastructure needs, how does the university play a role in that? And the university is a major investor along that corridor. Uh, other partnerships we've been looking at is our is the National Cybersecurity Center, and what's what's happening through the uh, College of Engineering uh, with UCCS. How we're looking at very specific uh, cyber related credentialing and the degree program. Martin spoke earlier about Space Command and the role that the university will play in Space Command, and 
you know, in this unique environment, it's about resiliency. The mayor emphasized this strongly during his State of the City address. It's about we're a very resilient community. Uh, I would say we're most one of the most resilient cities in America today. And there's been aspects of our city in which we have prospered economically. And there's been areas of our city in which people are really struggling. And so when you look at the environment of the university is how do we ensure that we have the appropriate platforms that students from all social economic areas of our city can address and receive access to the university? How do we ensure that we have the programming that supports them? And so when they graduate, they are employable and they have the tools they need to be very productive. And so during this pandemic, I have seen that we have turned challenges into opportunities in how we work together, how we collaborate with each other. And, you know, Martin has spoken about the uh, Hibble Center. Uh, he has talking, talk, uh, spoken about other collaborative initiatives. Um, I'll never forget just a few years ago, you know, Martin came to me and said, hey, we have a transportation issue. We have a traffic issue on the university. And the university and the city and the Pikes Peak Rural Transportation Authority all came together to look at how do we change this? How do we look at the traffic impacts of our students be able to access the university, uh, faculty be able to uh, access the university? How do we look at the traffic patterns that uh, that is having an adverse effect on the neighbors and those in the surrounding businesses, how we work with them. And we were able to work, come together to look at the funding and the building of an internal road that is a public street to address those specific needs. And people might not think that's a big deal. It was huge oh, yeah. in how we came together to make this happen. And soon we'll have the grand opening to open up this uh, road that will provide immediate access to uh, facilities within the university. It will help redirect some of the major traffic impacts uh, to this off major corridors of the city. And uh, it's really great traffic planning. And uh, just another example of collaboration. Those and are wonderful examples. And I think all those examples provide just an idea of why that stability that was built, you know, for all these years has come to, you know, to provide such a strong foundation during this critical time. And I, I, I want to, I want to leave with asking you both to answer a question about, um, because you're giving the mayor credit, you deserve a lot of it too, Jeff, and your team, you know, the city team, um, along with UCCS team. Yes. Um, you know, I know there's so many people working behind the scenes to make all these things happen. Um, and so how do you keep your university or city employees, the teams you oversee, how do you keep them positive, motivated, moving forward during this time? It's difficult. Um, you know, there are lots of challenges. Like you said, people are being creative, but, you know, how do you keep the morale up and keep them going? Um, what do you want to start, Martin? You know, uh, I think the answer to that question is everybody's different. And everybody has handled this situation differently. And I so I think a lot of this has to do with just listening. It has to do with what I think about as situational awareness. Really understand what's going on around you and what's happening with your folks. Um, because everybody's dealing with different stuff, whether it's family issues or personal issues or whatever it may be. And, you know, I've been we've been fortunate in that. You know, a lot of our employees have really risen to the occasion. They've really stepped up. They've said, you know what, this is the situation. This is the way it is. You know, I'll feel sorry for myself for a few minutes, but then we got to get on with business and we got to get the work done. And I think I think in where I sit, it's understanding that this is not easy. Uh, it's not it's hard to do. You got to give people breaks. You got to give them some slack and just understand that people will do the right thing and they'll do good work. And, and so I think ultimately uh, we've seen our people do just that. You know, some people, as Jeff said earlier, some people have thrived in this environment. Some people have done really incredible work in this environment. Other people have struggled in this environment. And so the key there is to just pay attention and be responsive to that. 
What about you, Jeff? Have you found similar situation? You know, uh, Jen, and I'm really glad you asked this question. And uh, uh, this morning I was meeting with the chief human resource officer, uh, Michael Sullivan, and his team. And uh, every year I go through a calibration process where um, I evaluate all the departments and the employees. And, you know, um, I say to them, I'm very concerned about uh, their, our employees have been very productive, but they are fatigued. Uh, um, psychologically, you're working in an environment and at one point in time, we didn't know, there, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And now uh, with updates we've see, received recently, uh, vaccines are being uh, distributed as we speak. And so that we're hoping that by next summer, we're back to a more normal environment. But during that during that time, we really have got to put a lot of effort into in supporting our employees. Um, uh, they're having a very difficult time. You have some of our city and university employees are not only have a professional responsibility to their position in supporting the organizations, but they're also our uh, instructors. They're having to be guidance counselors. Uh, they're having to, you know, create this environment that's conducive for their children and their spouses and supporting them. And we really have to applaud them. We really have to provide as much support to them as possible. Uh, we have to be very sensitive to what's going on in our environments. And, you know, being sensitive, sensitive is, is more than just having conversations with them. It's understanding or what are the real issues? How do we provide the support, the tools? Uh, how do we meet those very specific needs? And part of this is that going forward, we're, it will be a new environment. Even though there will be some return to normalcy, there will be a more of a hybrid approach on how we look at our work. And um, I just can't say enough about the, the greatest asset of both organizations is our employees. And we have to be very, very sensitive and, and support them. And I'll go back to having fun and laughing. And um, I think laughter is one of the best medicines we can ever take. And we really have to enjoy it. I enjoy my job. I really enjoy it. And um, thank you for giving me credit a few minutes ago, but I would not enjoy my job as much if I wasn't working with John Southers. And, you know, he has been an incredible leader uh, during this time, but we've all been great leaders. And, you know, certain, peoples are, certain people are recognized in this process, but we need to take the time to recognize those individuals who are working in our streets department, those who are working in neighborhood services, uh, the administrative support that is supporting our departments. And, you know, how do we applaud them? How do we pay them homage? And we have to be very, very creative in this process. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think you both make great points. And I think the support is important for everyone right now. Um, and I think, you know, you know, focusing on some of these positive stories and the good news. And I've got to say that the partnership that you are both addressing today is one of those good news topics, you know, mm -hmm. focusing on the positive and all the resiliency of our community, like you mentioned, <laughs> Jeff, is what's going to help us through, you know, it's what's going to really help us feel positive, um, feel hopeful mm -hmm. um, and optimistic and motivated, I think, moving forward. Um, so I really appreciate you both taking the time to speak with us. I really want to encourage the listeners or anyone watching um, to follow the city of COS or UCCS on social media. And that's a great way to get connected and um, know what's happening. You know, if some of the projects that we've mentioned today are new to you, um, that's another way for you to feel um, connected and updated on North Nevada and city for champions and all those fun things that are coming. And I'm sure many more will be coming in the future. Thanks to both of you for being here and for your time and insight. We really appreciate it um, for Behind the Springs and for also um, the five things you need to know for UCCS. Um, we're fortunate to be able to have these guests and hopefully you learned a, a thing or two about UCCS and the city of Colorado Springs. And please follow them for more information. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Thank you. Thank you.